Hello everyone, in today's lecture we will start discussing uh, the memory basics and uh, we will consider two classes, uh, namely uh, static and dynamic RAMs and architectural differences between uh, these two uh, integrated circuits. Uh, static RAMs are usually used for faster accesses and are part of the memory hierarchy close to the processor. However, they are expensive to manufacture. Dynamic D, uh, RAMs uh, or dynamic RAM cells, on the other hand, are manufactured using simpler and fewer components such as single capacitor and transistor. We will also develop on the different types of DRAMs uh, throughout the class and, and the ongoing quest for making such memory systems faster and faster to catch up, to catch up with the growing uh, processor speeds. So let us with a, start with the basic memory system, which has k address lines decoded to address 2 to the k words of memory. Each word is n bits. Uh, read and write si uh, are single control lines defining the simplest of memory operations. This port was sometimes is, is, is a single entry point for most of the memory ICs. Uh, address field specifies the memory location to operate on information sent to the memory and it's interpreted as control information which specifies the type of operation to be performed in the memory. Typical operations are read and write. Uh, others are op other operations are, are a combination of reads and followed by the write and a variety of other operations associated with delivering blocks of data to the user or to do CPU. Most memory operations are asynchronous but we will see that there are beneficial designs with synchronous operations as well. Address and data must be established certain time before read-write transitions occur to avoid disturbing stored contents of other addresses uh, in the memory. In the memory, and and also to be able to write data accurately. The accuracy is a pretty important topic here for such a fast operating integrated circuit family. A memory can be viewed as a two-column table, where the first column shows the memory address uh, or index, and the second is the value stored in that memory location. Each table entry, or the row in this table, is called a memory word. Uh, size of the memory is given by the number of memory locations multiplied by the word size. Memory ICs can be classified into two major categor categories, uh, random access memory and read-only memory. Random access memories are volatile memories. In other words, data shall be lost when the device is powered off. Reads and writes are fast, and both read and writes can take approximately the same time. On the other hand, ROMs, read-only memories, are non-volatile. In other words, it retains information when powered off. It allows fast read and writes, um, and there are very uh, different versions of ROM that can be written, uh, rewritten, uh, but but writes to the different kinds of ROMs that are observed to be slower than a RAM. Even slower and slower memory options are uh, now becoming available each day, like hard disk drives and SSDs. And they can be also classified under ROMs, and they allow non-volatile memory technologies at varying degrees of access speeds and latency. A ROM is a memory device that maintains its data permanently until the device is reprogrammed or such. Masked ROM, on the other hand, it's a ROM type which should be programmed by the manufacturer, whereas the programmable ROM can be programmed many times and erased if need arises. And this need, uh, no manufacturer is touched anywhere and is solely under user's control. We'll have more discussions on that in a bit. But before that, let's start with the ROM example implementation. Um, this figure here shows 8x4 ROM implementation using a decoder and a bunch of multiple input OR gates. Um, if you look carefully to this figure, we would like to note that there are three state buffers uh, used to open circuit the output when the chip select or output enable input is disabled. The connections shown uh, determine the binary data stored in the ROM. Um, you can realize that if you want to store another binary data, completely different than what's shown in this table, uh, then you will need to remanufacture the ROM because wire connections are already made and they have to be disconnected. Uh, in order to allow uh, space or capability of rewiring all these connections uh, to get a different data stored in the ROM. So moving from previous example, we would like to solve the inflexibility issue due to the hardwired connections. So instead of hardwiring the connections, we can employ electronic switches to produce different types of ROMs. Here are all, here are I've listed all the possibilities available in the market as of now. Uh, the first one is called programmable ROM or PROM. So instead of hard switching, in this case, uh, you use electronic switching. Uh, 
um, as shown to the right of this slide. Uh, the other one is one-time PROM. Uh, it uses fusible links um, used as electronic switches um, and programmed only once. So you can only program that PROM only once. The next one is the ultraviolet EPROM. Um, th 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 this uses special transistors uh, uh, instead of electronic on, on you know in place of electronic switches, and they can be e erased uh, by placing EPROM under uh, ultra ultraviolet light. Um, which is usually known as blue light. Uh, so that can be erased, but it's a bit, bit of a costly uh, technique to erase data on a ROM. So the final one is the most popular one now, electrically uh, charged or electrical EP ROM. Um, it, it is erased and programmed with electronic signals. And, and it lies actually the foundation for flash memory. So another type is random access memory. In a RAM, the storage of information is inherently only temporary. As a consequence, the information uh, must be periodically refreshed to make the behavior or the functionality look like the static RAM storage. The need for refresh is primary difference between the DRAM and SRAM. Here I list more uh, and some of the other uh, fundamental differences between SRAM and DRAM, and it's left as an exercise to read and study these differences. <coughs> Uh, the basic element of a static RAM cell is the latch, and DRAM, instead, instead of a latch, it stores data in, form, in the in form of electric charges and capacitors, for example. So, the, which makes SRAM is fast and DRAM slow, and SRAM needs more space on the semiconductor chip, and DRAM, uh, as you might guess, that SRAM uses more transistors, and DRAM needs less space on the semiconductor because it only the single bit cell only takes about uh, one capacitor and one transistor on a, on a silicon wafer. SRAM is more expensive, therefore, than DRAM, and it consumes more power, uh, and it consumes all the time, and DRAM consumes power only when it's, when it's accessed. Uh, finally, SRAM is used as a cache. We will cover the caches later, um, and DRAM is used as a main memory. The cache is, is something, some memory architecture that's close to the CPU and is faster, and main memory is basically um, a bit further away from CPU, uh, but it's slower. Static RAM cell consists of an SR, SR latch and four AND gates. Select input is used to enable the latch operation, and if B and B prime are used in ordinary sense, in other words, B is zero and B prime is one, or vice versa, we can use write functionality to fill the cell with the data. If both B and B prime are zero, then it can be used to output the stored value, uh, i.e. the read functionality can be enabled. And there's also a table here for convenience uh, to uh, Convince yourself that uh, how this bit cell is 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 functioning functioning. Bit cells are combined to make up a single bit sli slice. Uh, if we put together two to the n bit slice uh, bit cells in a shown uh, configuration, we can get two to the n minus one word select for each cell. This would select a particular cell. Um, on the other hand, there are also extra logic to input the data as well as provide read write functionality to this bit slice. Um, as you can see, and there is an extra latch, uh, if, you, if you observe, uh, that latch um, at the output um, is used to, to store the requested data before the next clock cycle, right? Uh, in order to build a static RAM IC, we need decoder to translate address, uh, addresses and to, to word lines, and also three, three state buffers for enabling and disabling the output by, by the chip select input. The chip select input is also known as memory enable in many contexts. Um, here is we use different namings, uh, but, but but it's not just a confuser, but but it's just a general jargon of, of how we name all these stuff. The bit cell combined with the decoder provides a capability of addressing word lines this way. However, think about the possibility of having larger bit cells, which will also require higher order decoders, and that will also complicate the logic. So the alternative to that is called coincident selection. Uh, this is based on the idea that uh, that the decoder uh, size can be reduced using coincident selection in a two-dimensional array. Um, this is a planar architecture where row as well as column selects are used to address a specific cell location in a two-dimensional cell grid. In our implementation, we used uh, two decoders, one for words and one for uh, the bits uh, or bit slices. Compared to the previous single bit slice model, word select now becomes row select and bit select becomes or bit slice select becomes uh, column select. And in our example, the word size is four bits long 
and we used the four four by one S ramps in our in this example. Next, we need to discuss how we make uh, larger and wider memories. And in this example here, uh, we assume we have four four by one S RAM chips with associated input and output ports, as shown. So by using four of these SRAMs, we can have 16 by one SRAM, as shown to the left of the slide. Uh, two more address bits are used to serve for finer granularity within each uh, chip. Uh, and, 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 and since only, uh, you know, of the chips are enabled by the, um, you know, the MSP bits of the addresses, and only one of them will be activated and read or written data. On the other hand, we can use them in a different configuration as shown to the right, where now the word size is four bits, uh, so four bits can be read out or stored at, at once in this configuration, um, and, and these four bits are indexed by three, two, one, and zero on top, as you can see. Um, so there are these two different co configurations now, uh, but the second configuration now allows us to have four by four RAM um, uh, using four by one RAM chips. The second class of RAMs is called dynamic RAM, uh, the principle behind it is the storage of information on capacitors. In other words, we charge and discharge of capacitor to change stored value. Uh, the transistor can be used as a switch in that context and allows us to, to store one through cap charging the capacitor or discharging it to store uh, to zero value. We can model DRAM itself through a D flip-flop and a three-state buffer. So here is the analogy to show how DRAM cells work. Uh, the capacitor start at far left of the switch system. If it's stored one, then the capacitor is supposed to be fully charged. If a zero is stored, then the capacitor is supposed to be fully discharged, right? So when we want to write one, we will have the bus uh, that connects the transistor charged. Uh, then the transistor is switched on to allow the charge to move into the capacitor. Uh, next, the transistor is switched off uh, to trap the charge on the capacitor before it starts leaking it and eventually, you know, empties, right? Uh, so we're, we're going to have a, a solution to that later. So let, we'll, let's defer that discussion uh, to the next slide. Similarly, a zero can be written as well. On the other hand, uh, we can read a one while the bus is not fully charged and we switch on the transistor. Uh, if we can sense a level rise in the charge on the bus, we can simply decide or detect that there is a one stored on the capacitor. Similarly, if we ch if we charge level if the charge level drops once the switch is turned on, we we decide or detect a zero value. So we say that we read a zero value in that case. DRAM bit cells are very much like the SRAM bit cell uh, or bit slice. However, for cost point of view, they're they're quite different. Since SRAM uses latches for storing bits, DRAM uses approximately three x less transistors compared to the SRAM. For large memory structures or architectures, this makes these two technologies significantly different in terms of cost. Um, so, as we have mentioned before, capacitors in a DRAM leaks charge, and in order to correctly sense out and the correct value, you know, for accurate read and read up or read or write operations, we need circuits to refresh the charges on the capacitors. In other words, to support refresh operation, additional logic is needed. Here is the logic block diagram shown to support all the operations needed to fully operate DRAM cells accurately. The refresh is usually initiated by external control using row address strobe and the column address strobe. These are abbreviated as RAS or CAS, single signals. The external logic may be DRAM controller or other logic external to the DRAM chip. Uh, refresh periods are adjusted based on the timing constant of the capacitive, capacitive circuit. Um, from your circuits uh, theory background, uh, you, you probably have some idea about what timing constant is. Uh, it's basically the time that, that you know, exponentially drop, uh, the, the charge that is trapped in the capacitor exponentially drops, um, so you have to really track those uh, you know, uh, how fast it drops uh, to, to, uh, to enable um, or, or to, to, to decide on the, the periods, the period of time that you need to um, refresh the charge in, trapped in that capacitor. It's usually a millisecond scale for modern DRAMs, by the way. Having, uh, you know, we having, uh, that's an experience that having over thousands and thousands of different use cases. 
Um, rows are refreshed through periodic uh, sampling because bursty refreshing algorithms will halt the memory for a long time and which will slow down the computer operations. Here is the typical read timing uh, diagram for DRAM based on the block diagram presentation. So the first, the address lines are provided to the memory. Next, RAS and CAS are enabled, which will provide row and column addresses for the 2D cell grid. Next, the outputs are enabled, and the data output will, uh, will finally have valid data to be read from. Right timing also shows similarities in, in, uh, to this uh, you know, timing diagram, and it's left as an exercise to draw a similar timing diagram for the right operation of the DRAM. There are various types of DRAMs uh, widely used in modern computers today. Main motivation for different types of DRAMs has been the endless quest for speed because historically, memory speeds has always been, uh, have always been la lagging behind CPU speeds. All the types here we will discuss are optimized based on the assumption that reads from memory are bursty. That is to say, for a read request, for example, contiguous uh, memory address locations are read at the same time. This has been observed to be part of the practical experience that we gain over many use cases. There are three types of DRAMs that we will cover in this class. The first generation is called synchronous DRAM and is often is used quite useful to, in, uh, to increase data rate by exploiting the fact that most of the data transfers are consecutively address words. As DRAMs, you know, synchronous DRAMs employs I.O. logic in which the whole row in a bank of DRAM cells are read. This allows consecutive reads to be performed pretty fast. Um, double data rate SDRAM is a simple extension to the SDRAM and it essentially doubles the transfer rate by using both the rising and falling edge of the clock. Uh, finally, RAMBUS DRAM or DRAM is another type where the interaction between uh, the RDRAM IC and memory bus um, to, the, to the CPU uh, is basically handled by the packet communication, which, uh, which, which sometimes is much, much faster than any other communication protocol. Um, so it is best to quantify uh, how much of a speed gain uh, that these transfer, uh, different types of uh, DRAMs, promises uh, for transfer. So let's consider the burst read of eight words. Um, we assume for both SDRAM and DDR SDRAM to have a word size of four bytes, similar to MIPS memory architecture, and memory clock frequency five nanoseconds. So it takes four clock cycles from application of row address until uh, first word available at the output of the memory, let's assume. When reading a burst data, it therefore takes 60 nanoseconds. It translates to memory bandwidth of 533 megabytes per second. Uh, on the other hand, double data read as SDRAM uh, provides a transfer rate of two data words per clock cycle. Using the same clock frequency and latency settings, we can calculate the memory bandwidth to be around one gigabyte per second. Uh, of course, we can use other techniques to improve this, for example, by increasing the word size. Uh, however, this calculation determines the, the, the maximum possible, like ultimate limits. Because in real systems, data at different rows might be requested uh, which will violate the burst, uh, burst, burst read assumption and the performance may drop well below uh, these figures here. In this class, we covered basics of memory integrated, uh, memory integrated circuits. We considered two classes named the static and dynamic RAMs. Static RAMs are usually used for faster accesses and are part of the memory hierarchy close to the processor. However, they're expensive to manufacture. Dynamic RAM cells, on the other hand, are manufactured using simpler and fewer components such as single capacitor and transistor. Since charge leaks out from the capacitors, these RAM type requires uh, periodic refreshing. They also cover different types of RAM technologies for speeding up the process. So in the next class, we will uh, hopefully focus on uh, the uh, memory hierarchy and uh, and, and more about memory uh, IC technology. Uh, so please feel free to drop any questions you might have about today's lecture into my email box, and, uh, and I'll be more than happy to help you with your questions. Thanks a lot.